Hey everybody, it's Mike back with Pick of the Week. Um, I read a lot of comics every week, and this week there wasn't one that particularly leapt out at me, so instead we're going to go back in time, or at least back down the wall, and highlight a book that you probably missed last week. Come on. Here it is. Judge Dredd, number one, from IDW Publishing. So there's an old adage, well, all right, it's going to become an old adage, but I'm coining it tonight, that Americans don't give a shit about Judge Dredd unless there's a movie coming out, at which point they care for about a month until the film inevitably tanks at the box office, then interest is lost in the book and it's unceremoniously canceled. So before that happens to this book, please check it out. I can remember back in 92 going into Shinders with my mom to get my Dark Horse Aliens and uh, Batman fix. And I found a new number one staring out at me from the shelf. It was DC's American Judge Dredd. I had very little knowledge of the character. I knew he was some kind of future cop. But uh, I picked it up and was blown away by this rad dystopian society and this faceless monosyllabic Nazi stormtrooper of, a, of an anti-hero. I was very quickly enthralled and spent the next several months digging through the quarter bins at Schinders, digging out uh, old Fleetway and Eagle reprints of the Dread books. Uh, one of the cool things about the Dread character is that he grows. Uh, the, the, the book ages in real time, the character ages in real time, so that the, the Dread stories being written now take place 35 years after the originals, uh, in which Dread is kind of an embittered old man by this point. Uh, IDW turns back back the clock to the character's first year in this book from writer Dwayne Swierinski. Uh, to his credit, he very easily captures the flavor of those early 2000 AD stories. Um, this book actually features two short two stories. One, uh, which is part one, is the first part of a larger serialized story that'll continue next month. The other is a done in one. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it very, very much captures the flavor of those early 2000 AD stories, which is also to its detriment. If you're not a longtime Dread fan, you're going to pick this book up, read the relatively simplistic stories, and kind of wonder what the big deal is. But for old-time fans like me, it's going to give you a nice dose of, dose of nostalgia, and it's nice to have Dread back on the racks when 2000 AD and the magazine are often cost-prohibitive. So check it out, folks. It's a good one.